Today's topic is 5.3, radical equations found on pages 294 to 303 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of radicals with numerical and variable radicands, including computations and solving equations. That's what we're doing today. And that's limited to square roots and one or two radicals. Our lesson objectives, to be able to solve equations that have one radical in them, to be able to solve equations that have two radicals in them, to be able to state the restrictions on the variable in a radical equation, and to be able to solve a real world problem using radical equations. So in this lesson, we'll be looking at how to solve equations when our variables in the radicand, that's underneath the root sign. And we will approach it in a similar way that we did with the square root property. What we're gonna do is isolate the root and then square both sides. Um, so our example, solve the following equation, be sure to state your restrictions on X and make sure to check your answer. So here's our first equation. It says negative eight plus square root of three Y over five equals negative two. So we're gonna isolate the root. So get the root all by itself. So we're gonna move the negative eight over and that means we get root three y over five equals positive six. Then we are going to square both sides. So we get three y over five, because when we square both sides, that really just cancels out the root. And that equals 36. When we multiply both sides by five, we get 180 when 36 times five is 180. And then we get y equals 60. Um, we need to state our restrictions. Our restrictions here, are that y cannot equal zero, or sorry, y can equal zero. It can be anything greater than zero. That's our restriction. It can be greater than or equal to zero because um, anything that we put in here that's greater than or equal to zero will give us a, a positive number and we can take the square root of that. And so this y definitely fits into that restriction. And now we need to check our answers. So we would take uh, the 60 and plug her back in. So we get the negative eight plus the square root of 180 divided by five should equal negative two. 180 divided by five is 36, so we get negative eight plus the square root of 36 equals negative two. Well, that's just positive six. The square root of 36 is positive six, so negative eight plus six does equal negative two, so it actually checks. Our second example here, we have a binomial on the left-hand side and a single term on the right hand side. So we need to isolate our root once again. So we're gonna uh, subtract m from both sides. So we end up with negative square root two m plus three equals six minus m. Now your best bet here is to multiply both sides by negative one to get this negative off of this side. It'll make our lives just a little bit easier in the long run. So we get square root of two m plus three. If I multiply this side by negative one, both these things change signs, so I'm gonna end up with m minus six instead. So now when I square both sides, I actually have a binomial on the right-hand side, and I need to square that properly, which means I need to multiply it by itself. So don't just square each of these terms, because that's not right. We have to square a binomial, so we square the first term, we square the last term, we multiply these two terms together, and then we double it. So that gives us negative 12m plus 36. That's the same thing as saying, m minus six times m minus six, and then using FOIL. So now we need to move, we need to move everything to one side because what we have here is a quadratic and we learned last unit how to solve quadratics. So we have to move everything to one side. And that would be by subtracting two m and by subtracting three. And now we have something that we can solve either using factoring or the quadratic formula. We're, I'm gonna factor this one because the two things that multiply together to give you positive 33 and add together to give you negative 14 are m minus 11, or I guess negative 11 and negative three. And that means that m equals positive 11 and m equals positive three. Now we need to check these answers. And I guess we also didn't state our restrictions yet. So our restriction here, we know that two m plus three has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that means two M is greater than or equal to negative three. That means M has to be greater than or equal to negative three over two. Both of our answers fit in that category, but we still need to check them. So when we check them, we get to plug them in. So in the first case, I plug in 11 minus two times 11 is 22. 22 plus three is 25. So I get 11 minus five equaling six, and that is true. So the first one checked out. And for the second one, when I check it out, I put in a three minus, two times three is six, plus three is nine. But here's one that doesn't check out, because three minus three does not equal six. 
So that means that we have to discard that answer. So you always want to check your answers every time to make sure that you uh, don't have an extraneous answer. So if you happen to have radicals on both sides of the equation, you will need to isolate one of the radicals and then square both sides. Note, this will still result in an equation with a radical. You'll just have to isolate the radical again. So here's our example. It says solve the following equation. Square root of 3 plus j plus square root of 2j minus 1 equals 5. So what I've done is I've isolated the 2j minus 1, which means I've moved the 3 plus j over to the other side. So that equals 5 minus the square root of 3 plus j. So when I square both sides, I now get just 2j minus 1 all by itself here. And on the right-hand side, I need to remember what it's like to square binomial. So I'll have to probably do it the long way this way to get my point across. So I have to multiply it by itself. So when I do that, 5 times 5 is 25. Now I have 5 times negative root 3 plus j, and then another 5 times negative 3 root plus j, which gives me negative 10. 3 root 3 plus j. And then the last one is when I multiply negative 3 plus j times itself, negative root 3 plus j times itself, sorry, um, we'll cancel out those root signs because it's just basically squaring it. So then I get minus 3 plus j. So when it's all said and done here, I get 25 minus 10, 3 plus j minus 3. Oh, sorry, that should be a positive because it's a negative times a negative. So I get positive 3 plus j over here, and I get 2j minus 1. Now, I need to isolate this root again, so that means I'm going to move everything else to the other side. So when I do that, I have 25 plus 3, which is 28. If I subtract that from the other side, I get negative 29. And then I also have a j here. If I subtract that from over here, I just get a regular j. So I get j minus 29 on the left-hand side equals negative 10 root 3 plus j. Now at this point, you might want to divide by negative 10, but it won't make this left-hand side any less complicated, so we're going to leave it where it is. And um, we're going to just divide both sides by negative 1 again to change the sign here. So I get 29 minus j on the left-hand side, and I get 10 times root 3 plus j on the right-hand side. Now I can square both sides, but when I square both sides, I have to be careful. I'm going to square this, and it has to be a binomial. So it's going to be 29 minus j multiplied by itself. But when I square this side, I also have to remember to square the 10. So on the left-hand side, I will get 29 times 29, which is 841, minus 58j, because that's just 29 times j doubled, and then plus j squared. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to get 100 times 3 plus j. Because when I square the 10, I get 100. When I square the, three, the root 3 plus j, I just get 3 plus j. Moving everything to the left-hand side, because I have a positive j squared over there. And now I have 100 times 3, which is 300, and 100 times j, which is 100j. I end up getting j squared minus 158j plus 541, equaling 0. Now, you can try as many times as you want to try and factor this thing, but it's not going to uh, end up being very nice numbers. So what I did was use a quadratic formula. And when I was done using the quadratic formula, I found out that j was equal to two things. One of them was 154.5, approximately. And the other thing was approximately 3.5. So you have to be careful when you have two roots. You have to um, square both sides after you isolate one of the roots, and then you're probably going to have to isolate the remaining root and square both sides again. So um, just have to be used to squaring and what your result is after you square things like binomials and roots, etc. Our final example says Josh is shipping several mu small musical instruments in a cube-shaped box, including a drumstick, which just fits diagonally in the box. Determine the formula for the length d in centimeters of the drumstick. Okay, so there's what we're looking for, d, in terms of the area in square centimeters of one face of the box. What is the area of one face of the cube-shaped box that holds a drumstick of a length 23.3 centimeters? Express your answer to the nearest square centimeter. Okay, so we need to be able to find out um, an equation to find out what d is going to be. And that equation has to be in terms of a, the area. So the area of any one of these sides, we're going to call capital A which means each of these sides are going to be root a, because they are squares, so each side is going to be the square root of a. Which means if we draw another little triangle here, um, 
for our actual thing that we're finding. So this there is one side, there's the other side, and then the third side is going to be the diagonal across the, the face of the bottom. So this is a right triangle, so we need to be able to find an equation for D that'll incorporate this side and that side. Well, since this diagonal is part of a square which we know, we can now figure out what the length of that diagonal is going to be. And if this is root A and this is root A, and we're going to call this, say, X, then that means that this is a right triangle. So we get root A squared plus root A squared equals X squared. Um, root A squared is just A plus another root A squared is just another A equals X squared. And that means 2A equals X squared. And so X is equal to root 2A. So now we know this side is root 2A. And we know what this side is because that's just uh, one side of the cube. And each side of the cube is root A. So now we can use that information to find out what D is going to be. Because we know that D squared is going to be, it's a right triangle, it's going to be root A squared plus root 2A squared. That's just using the Pythagorean theorem. So we get D squared equaling A plus 2A, which means the equation for D is going to be root 3A. That's just A plus 2A, take the square root of both sides. So now we know the equation to find um, the distance from this corner all the way down to that corner. It's going to be root 3 times your area. Um, the second part of this question says, what is the area of one face of a cube-shaped box that holds a drumstick of length 23.3? So now we know the, the distance here, the length of the drumstick. So if we say 23.3 equals root 3a, then in order to find out what a is, we just need to square both sides, which would get rid of the square root. And then we can just divide both sides by 3. And when we do that, we find out that the area is going to be approximately... 181 centimeters squared. So in summary, when solving radical equations, you need to isolate the radical and then square both sides. If you have two radicals, you'll need to isolate one of the radicals, square both sides, and then isolate the remaining radical. So these ones will take a little bit more time, and you have to be careful. Um, don't mess up with your signs, and you need to know how to square things. And you want to make sure to check your answers to make sure they're reasonable. And if you are using a real-life problem, then you probably want to draw a diagram that helps you organize your information. So your assignment is on pages 300 to 303. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.